hello, hello. We are live. I hope we're live. Still, after like a year of this YouTube update, I have no idea what's going on. Absolutely no idea. Yeah, we're live. We're good to go. Perfect. Let me just quickly delete that thing that I made and give you guys a couple seconds to get on. I didn't really give you guys a time that I would start streaming, but we're starting now. <laughs> uh, let's go here. I wish I was more tech savvy. I just don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest with you guys. Videos. All right. All right, all right. Let's... Perfect. Perfect. Hello. Hello, Meats. Hello, Chris. How's it going from North Carolina? Holy wow, North Carolina. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I told you guys I'd start doing some more live streams. And here we are, another live stream, just a perfectly timed live stream. I kind of planned it a little bit in the head uh, just because we're doing a transition right now from all the multi-species uh, fishing I've been doing, all the lake trail with all the, oh, what else have I made for sh fishing for? Lake trail, oh, pike. You can't forget the, about the pike. Lake trail, pike, did some bofin in there. Going to be doing another species this Saturday, hopefully. Um, so we're kind of transitioning from spring where bass aren't really in season. So it kind of makes me go and venture into different species and we're transitioning to that bass opening, which I'm so excited about. Oh, wow. I can, I can, I can feel the jig bite already, guys. I'm so excited, but, um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure we're everywhere, <laughs> Decide on the SLX DC and you love it. That's awesome, Orange. Yeah, those SLX videos have been, uh, you, you guys have been really liking them. I did an SLX video on the regular SLX, the one on the XT, and a one on DC. And then I did a video comparing all the three. Because um, there's just, sometimes when you, look at, when you look at a couple reels trying to compare which one to buy, there's just so many words. And it's, it's kind of hard to decide what something means kind of deal. I don't know if you guys kind of understand what I'm saying. So... Hopefully my opinion in those videos kind of guided you guys to what you were looking for. But you're live at 1 in the morning. I'm sorry, Tactical Fisherman. <laughs> it's 7 p.m. here. Um, lose. Yeah, I've used a couple of lose in the past. I wasn't a huge fan of them. I only used the I only used the speed spools, though. I had a couple of them, and then I ended up selling them just because I didn't like them. But Maya, what's up? Hello, hello, hello. So yeah, we're always going to chat what's, what's going on in fishing, I guess, you guys. I, gu I guess. I guess. I don't know. I don't really, I never really have any topics to talk about when I start these live streams. But like I said, I've been doing a lot of pike and lake choke fishing, as you guys have probably seen from the videos. Uh, pike fishing is done right now. Um, water temps are in the, mid, in the low to mid 70s now. So um, all those bigger pike that I've been fishing for uh, with all those big swim baits and stuff, they've moved deep. Um, I'm not, I haven't really figured them out deep. So I, I kind of just stopped pike fishing at that point. I do have two more pike videos um, that I haven't posted yet that you guys will see. Uh, one of them is with my good buddy Seb. And um, yeah, I had a stellar pike season this year. Last year, I kind of was the first full like spring that I really targeted pike. I brought out my big swim baits. I brought out my big soft plastics, brought out a variety of jerk baits and all that stuff. And I really targeted them. Um, last year, I definitely figured them out. I figured out what they relate to near opening in the, in the beginning of spring. And I figured out where they moved to in the later spring, like June. Um, so I did. I replicated that exactly this year. I started off on shallow rock, shallow timber, near spawning bays. Um, and caught them really good early season. Opening day, we had a blast. I think we landed five... I don't want to see, yeah, five or six over, over 30, 30, I think our smallest one that day was 33 inches or 34 inches. So um, that's like probably still nine, nine ish pounds. They're pretty fat. So um, yeah, they, we started off on those shallow, shallow rocks. Uh, they moved to some trees. Aaron, Aaron didn't post this picture, but um, he caught a 39 uh, from some shallow rock that was that was our that was my the longest fish boated in my boat this season 39 I didn't get didn't get that 40 unfortunately um, 
very big head on that 39. You can tell she was post-spawn, uh, but super, super slender body. Uh, that was the biggest fish. And then after the whole rock deal kind of went away, they moved to the grass, um, grass sand transitions. I found them in still near the rock. And I found them in uh, timber. Actually, I didn't catch a single pike out of timber this year. They were all not, they were all just there like digesting. I saw some pigs right before you guys saw the video, right before I caught my PB, I saw a giant in a tree and I just couldn't get them to bite, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, I saw a couple big fish this year. I just couldn't get to bite. Um, definitely 40s, which kind of sucks. But you know what? At least, at least I'm fishing the right areas. At least I get to see them. So yeah, they then they after they finish up with that shallow timber, shallow transitions, they move off to deeper grass, and that's kind of when I stop fishing for them. Um, I still caught some last weekend, but anyways, it's bass season here next week, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then lake trout. I've been doing a fair bit of lake trout fishing. It's been a lot of fun actually. Um, uh, <laughs> deep jigging. I've been catching them on uh, the Freedom Turnback Shot. I've been catching them on swim baits, like five inch swim baits, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's something I want to do a lot, lot more is target deep, deep lake trout. Uh, maybe a couple times this summer. The thing is, like, I do want to target them in the summer because they they eat pretty good um, and they're fat. Like my PV, I caught in the summertime, but the water temps are warm and they don't. The lake trout don't like that surface temp being too warm. And I'm, I'm always scared that if I release a fish, I, I might see her come back up again just because of the water temp, right? So that's something I have to keep in mind. It, I don't really, like, I don't film a lot in the summertime just because I literally pick up the fish, take a picture, and send her back down. But I'm still probably going to do it. Just have to be very, very careful. <clears throat> What's your thoughts on MLF? My thoughts are on MLF is that I... Don't watch it. I don't really care for it. I like the Bass Master. This is uh, when we went down to New York last summer just to go watch Seth Fighter. <laughs> but um, I don't really care for it at all, to be honest with you guys. I like the Bass Master format a lot more. And, like, I rarely ever watch tournament fishing. And when I do, it just I just don't. I, honestly, I just don't have time for it. Sorry, guys, I missed a bunch of questions. I'm going to go back up and try to answer them. What about 13 fishing? I've used the rods. I've used the omens, I use the omen blacks, the $100, $100, whatever, $20 rods. Uh, I, I like them. They were pretty light, but they were very, very stiff. That's the one thing I didn't like about them. I got a medium heavy, and I was like, am I fishing with a broomstick? Like, what's going on here? Um, but, yeah, it, they're okay. I mean, I'm sure they've improved since the last time. I Last time I used a, a, a 13 fishing was, like, four years ago, so... Top water video. I have it marked in my calendar. Top water video. It's happening, guys. I'm going to be fishing more top water. That's one thing. There's a couple things I'm going to be working on this bass season. Um, I, have, I was kind of planning on making a video kind of on it, more talking about the tackle. But um, spy baiting. I want to I want to do more spy baiting, more hair jig fishing for smallmouth, um, more tube fishing, and more top water. So those are the kind of – oh, more swim baiting. More big swim baiting too. Oh, you guys should see the amount of money I've spent this this spring on swim baits. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> don't even want to talk about. You kill. You'll see all this, all this in my future videos, of course. But um, yeah, going to be working on all that. Kind of want to even out my spectrum of skills. I guess you could say. I do really want to break my personal best largemouth. Uh, my personal best largemouth has been standing for five years now, four years now. So I think it's time, guys. I think it's time. I'm definitely fishing the right areas. I'm definitely. I'm definitely coming across these fish. It's just a matter of getting one. <laughs> so smallmouth, I think I can do that too if I have time this fall. But uh, <clears throat> I saw a picture about bass spawning. Sorry, not a picture. A comment about, about bass spawning and I can't find it. Um, but if you have a question, just ask it again because I'm way behind. Oh, where do bass go after spawn? So that's a really good question, especially here in Ontario. Um, our bass season opens the end of june which is almost always post spawn last year they were actually still spawning in a lot of areas but mostly always post spawn the very first thing i do when i get on the water um if it's a lake that you know then you'll, you'll know what i'm talking about if it's a lake that you don't know you might want to do a little bit of research before you go but you want to find the areas first of all where they spawn 
spawning base. So they could be a flat in the, in the middle of the lake that comes up and it's shallow, usually uh, two to like nine feet of water. Um, you want to find this, the spawning flats, spawning bays, where they spawn. And once they're done spawning, the first thing they do is they go swim out and they go into the first grass um, beds they find, or they go towards the shore and they stick into the, the cover there, into the, into the trees, into the lily pads. Any first structure outside of that um, spawning bay is what you want to hit first after after they spawn if you don't find them there you just continue on you hit you hit the um edges of the spawning bays the points of the spawning bays you hit some rocks a little further on you hit the next grass patch you just work your way up from the spawning bays eventually you'll figure out where they are and you can kind of work from there but the very first thing i'm going to do in bass open i know where they spawn on most of actually well, one lake i've never been to i'm planning on going to but we'll figure it out um i'm literally going to go on navionics or on any map i'm going to find areas where I think they're going to be spawning. I'm going to go there, literally sit where they probably spawned and just work my way out to the first grass bed and start flipping a jig. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, are you going to do musky fishing this year? I don't know. I've always, I've always said I was going to try it. I just never really had time. Um, the thing about musky fishing, I don't really have all the proper gear. and I don't want to harm the fish in any way, I guess you could say. I do have a net big enough, probably. Um, I just want to, you know, be able to care for the fish as much as possible. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a couple of trips this summer. I'll see. I missed a seven bass that was two feet front of me. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm way behind. I'm going to work my way up. <clears throat> um, my personal best walleye. <laughs> Probably about yay big. No. Um, you guys know Lake Sinclair, Detroit River. Do you know those, like, skinny, I don't know, what? how long is this? Like, 18-inch tops walleye? That's my personal best out of the Detroit River. I don't walleye fish. Um, I went once this year to the Bay of Quinney. Um, didn't catch anything. That kind of sucked. But, uh yeah, no, I, I don't really target them. I don't really know what I'm doing with them. So um, I guess I'm not really the one to talk about walleye. What's your favorite bass master? Who's your favorite bass master? Seth Fighter. Seth Fighter. I have a shirt here signed by him. Literally, Aaron and I went to this bass master classic in the St. Lawrence, not to watch the weigh-in, to go meet Seth Fighter again. <laughs> um dreaded markham here oh man markham isn't bad you, you go north you find water you go south you find water it's not that bad pb largemouth and smallmouth so my pb largemouth like i said four or five years ago actually on opener which is pretty cool off of chatterbait uh 575 uh, i really want to catch this fish in the fall i don't have a picture i don't have my phone on me but um it's the fish it was probably, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't measure it, but it was, it was 575. The head was huge. I can fit like five fists in there. It was huge. And the, the head was like ginormous like this. And then the fish just went head and then, <laughs> and nothing, just, just pure post spawn. She probably just like, she probably just finished spawning and went to the first grass bed to, to go feed. That's when I caught her. But um, yeah, 575 and smallmouth is 580 so my personal best small mouth is bigger than my personal best large mouth um 580 out of lake simcoe in the in the fall so i, I really want to go back there and get a six i want to break six on both species this year it's kind of ambitious um i do have a fair bit of time though this year i'm probably going to be fishing at least two, two days out of the week every week this summer hopefully maybe more hopefully we'll see but um <laughs> i really want to break those personal vests sea bass outdoors gang craft coming in hot so sea bass outdoors is the actually the owner of canadian tackle store you guys have seen me wear wear their hat you guys have seen me where else do you guys see oh lb goby lb goby sold on canadian tackle store so seb is bringing in some goodies to canadian tackle store stay tuned for that if you guys follow my instagram lady bass fishing i'll post on there when it's up but we got some goodies guys got some goodies do I have any NRX rods? Yeah, I have 
one. I had one that I gave to Aaron, and last year I bought myself one. It's the 902 NRX 902S uh, JWR, so the jigging worm rod. It's the one that G Loomis kind of discontinued a couple years back. They case discontinued it before I even knew what NRX was. Um, they discontinued a couple years back, and by popular demand, they actually brought it back. Um, the 901, which they're both 7.6 rods. The 901 is like a light power, and the 902 is like a like a medium light power. So I went with the medium light. Um, kind of kind of wish I went with the light, but it's it's whatever. Now I think I'll be able to get by with the with the medium light, but I haven't used it yet. I actually have it packed in my car. Hopefully I'll use it this Saturday. Um, but I'm planning to be throwing hair jigs, spy baits. Um, I don't know. That's pretty much about it <laughs> on it. It's a, it's gonna be great rod for whatever I end up throwing on it. Anyways, it's a it's a it's a really nice rod. <laughs> um, curious when you fish a jerk bait. Why do you work the bait with the real handle? I don't. It may it may look like I do just because I real. I work my jerk bait really fast. I'm really bad at jerk bait fishing, guys. I fish my jerk bait like a like a swim bait or a crank bait. It's it's just way too fast. But I am I'm fishing. I'm, I am working the rod on the the lure, the jerk bait on slack, with my rod. But every couple twitches, I reel in my line, so it may look like I'm fishing or I'm 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 working it with my reel. It's just I'm fishing it so fast that I'm literally reeling it in every couple seconds um, just to keep up with it. So I need to slow down. That's a good point. That actually made me realize I need to slow down. <laughs> Any idea on Canada will let Americans in again? Oh, I have no idea, Tom. Absolutely no idea. I haven't been keeping up with any of that, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Yeah, we got a live chat going. Sorry, I'm just reading these comments. Ever caught a gar pike? I have not caught a gar pike. I wanted to this year, but um, never got to it. We just need more. I just need more time. <laughs> I fished like St. Clair from Muskie. Oh, that's sick. That's a in the fall. It's one of my one of my dream uh, dream trips for sure. The thing is, I'd be too bored trolling for them. I'll have to catch for them. But <clears throat> will YouTube make pro fishing obsolete? I don't think so. I think they go hand in hand. I think there's different marketing for both, you know, pro fishing and YouTube fishing. You just hit different. Well, not necessarily. I guess now it's kind of overlapped a fair bit. But you, you do hit a fair dip, different amount of people with uh, with pro fishing and with uh, YouTube fishing. <clears throat> Sea bass, you want to? Sh I don't know, dude. I don't know. Oh no, you know what? No, you sea bass already posted the video. So I went fishing with sea bass last weekend, and he posted the video. So if you guys want to have a sneak peek of what we kind of ended up doing, you can go over to his channel. But that video for me will be up next week. <laughs> you should go to catch a musky princess lady bass. Ah, do you, I know I really want to. I just don't have the time right now just because this week I'm only fishing Saturday and next week is bass opener. And for the next couple of weeks, it's just going to be bass. I need to get all my bass in. Maybe in the fall if I have time. Yeah, Tom, if you have family up here, you, you might be able to get through just because I think they opened it up for uh, family reunions, for family visits, not stuff. Caught a 42-inch pike and a few small ones on the LB Gobi like seven days ago. You're kidding. Brian, I need pictures. I need pictures. Email them to me. Send them on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Wow. 42-inch pike on the LB Gobi. I never thought I'd see that or hear of that at all. Wow. I haven't used the LB Gobi since wintertime, to be honest with you guys. I'm going to have one rigged up for opener, that's for sure. But I haven't used it in a while. Favorite Smalley Lake, uh, Lake Ontario, Lake Simcoe. Prime. <laughs> They're so fat in there because they have gobies. Gobies are like 99.9% .9 fat. It's like eating, I don't know how to relate to humans. It's just like eating fat. <laughs> they get chunky. <laughs> Come to California, dude. I wish. That'd be so fun. 
bass fishing links. Yeah, I was on Lake St. Clair. When was when was the last time I was on Lake St. Clair? I was there last fall. I went but I went fishing with my buddy Phil. No, 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 no. This happened a couple years ago. I was walleye fishing, I think. No, I was bass fishing. Yes, the first time I met Seth Fighter. Uh, this was September a couple years ago. He was here for the Bassmaster. And I went down to fish with um, Dave. He's actually the owner of English Choice. We did a couple days fishing on Lake St. Clair. Oh, man, we were just idling to our spot. We were moving from one couple strains of grass to another couple strains of grass. And I look over the side of the boat, and I'm like, there's a log floating. And then I realized logs don't float. And I had a closer look, and it was a muskie. Definitely 50 inches. or I don't. It was huge. It was just sitting like a foot below the surface, just just sunny. I'm guessing he had something to eat and he was just chilling there. Uh, scared me shitless, but <laughs> that'd be a pretty cool trip to do. Have you done many upgrades to your boat? Um, Eric, I have a boat tour coming in two weeks. I go over my whole boat, all the electronics, all everything, how I store it. Kind of, I don't really, I, I kept it pretty short. I didn't really give my opinion of the boat too much but because you guys you, you guys kind of get the idea two weeks so i talk about all of that so love to see more videos feet bruno bruno laura bruno is the type of guy that does the half day trips um he's a very excited dog he loves ice fishing i uh, bring him a fair bit ice fishing just because it's not very hot but in the summertime he has to do half trips he just gets so excited and hyperventilates and i give him water but he doesn't want to drink water because he's so excited so um, he only does usually does a couple hour trips only, uh, but I'll be bringing him out more. Don't worry, guys. He'll he'll be more in my, in my videos a little bit more. Just not on hot days and only for a couple hours. <clears throat> Thoughts on ten inch ribbon tail worm? I don't think I've ever used a ten inch. I've used an eight inch. Never a ten inch. What rod? What size hook? Um, rod definitely like a seven two to seven six heavy. I do all my worm fishing on a seven two heavy or seven six heavy um size hook 10 inch i don't know for 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 the eight inch i use five alt hooks i believe so i'll go with a five or six or even seven alt hook if you want uh, but usually they eat it from from the bottom anyways tiger muskie is a beautiful fish right pb tigers 47 wow i've caught a tiger i caught a tiger on the niagara fishing with avery uh, avery rose but um it wasn't it wasn't 47 <laughs> bruno yes bruno will be more videos have you ever fished in a tourney? Yeah, I've done. I've done two tournaments. Uh, my very first one was with Sea Bass Outdoors. We actually won it. Um, and my second one, I fished it on Lake Sinclair in the fall. And I think we came third or fourth, probably fourth. I don't remember. But those are the only two I did. And that was a fair, actually a really long time ago. I haven't done one in the last couple of years. Not really like, I don't know. I, you, for tournament fishing, I feel like you need the right partner. And, um, my not ambitions my drive and focus like i got very competitive it just has to be matched properly and if i don't find a tournament partner then it's not going to do it i don't want to you know stress myself with someone i don't want to fish with so have you fished with garmin live scope yet yes it is absolutely insane if i could afford it i would buy it but <laughs> yeah it's 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 crazy it's <laughs> really crazy <laughs> Have you tried Mystery Tackle Box? I have. I used to use Mystery Tackle Box. I did. I haven't had a Mystery Tackle Box in probably five years, though. So it was cool. I mean, it was cool living here in Ontario where, like, you don't really get, you don't have the same exposure to lures and baits and companies here in Ontario as you do to the States. The States just has a lot more. So it was cool getting, like, baits I would never find here. Um, but other than that, it was, it was, eh. Now I just, now I don't really like, I just have baits that I like to use. And I just keep restocking those. So favorite for largemouth. That's a good transition there, Ethan. Look what I got. <laughs> we have a nice order. These were actually made yesterday by the man himself, uh, Brendan at the Perfect Jig. These are the jigs I use. I uh, sent him an order and we got them. He is restocking all of the stores here in Ontario right now, which is why these aren't in packages. He literally had to make them yesterday because um, I wanted them for this live stream. But I'm going to show you guys kind of the jigs I use. You guys see these a fair bit. I always talk about them. I like to tell you guys what I use. But we have a bunch of 3 eighths, 
and a couple half, as you guys can see, I use a lot of three eighths. And as you guys can see, most of them are black. There's pretty much two or three colors that I use, which are black. We have a nice purple blend and we have uh, Mr. Natural. So these are the Perfect Jig Elite Mini Jig. As you guys can see, look at that head. I love the head on these. Maybe I'll show you guys a lighter color so it'll show up a little bit better. Look at the head. It's like a it's like a hybrid archy and flipping jig. That line tie, I really like that line tie. It comes through grass very, very well. Um, this is the Mr. Natural color right there. One of my go-tos. Has been my go-to ever since I started fishing black mostly, but has rattles, has a screw lock keep on there for my trailers that I use, which I also restocked. And we have a three out mustad hook on there. I do like the minis a little bit more. I feel like um, I get more bites on it. I also feel a lot more confident throwing the smaller size jig uh, as opposed to the regular full size jig. Uh, just my personal preference though. I do, have a, I do have regular sized ones, but I just don't really throw them as much as the minis. So I'm only restocked on minis. Um, so that's Mr. Natural. It's one of my go-tos right there. Another go-to, which has become my go-to, <laughs> is just straight black. And I throw a black or uh, a black blue fleck trailer on there, usually a pack a chunk or a yum, a yum chunk thing on there. And this is another color that I like. I've been throwing a fair bit of purple over the years, but not as much as, as these colors. This is green pumpkin purple right there. This will be, we also have a couple of black and purples in there, but these are the majority of my fishing. So those have to go on the tackle box, but I'm pretty excited about those. Fishing with Nate, thank you, swag moment. <laughs> nice, nice. I really appreciate all your support, guys. This Everything that's being donated here is going right back into gas money to get back out on the water. So, <laughs> um, Everfish Lake, I don't know what it's called. In blind, no, I have no idea where that is. Sorry, dude. <laughs> when will you be producing the LB merch? Laura, it's in the works. I have a nice fat shipment of merch coming that, first of all, I'm going to try. I'm going to make sure um, I like the material, the shirts, sweaters, hats, and all that stuff. going to make sure I like the design on it, make sure everything's sized properly and all that stuff. So, first of all, we're going to do the first round is going to be just me trying it. And then um, I'm going to obviously make a store and you guys can will be able to purchase it. So, yeah, it's in the works. <laughs> it's in the works. And I'm going to be doing like a standard Lady Bass LB merch. And then we're going to be having some some retro. Like, you know, you guys know the old LB, uh, the fish with the with the maple leaf. We're going to be doing some designs of that kind of stuff too. So we caught an 81-inch tiger muskie in Wisconsin. Oh, <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> uh... It's Will. Can we still go fishing? Yes. Just tell your dad to text me. <laughs> we will go. I promise you we will end up going eventually. Oh, favorite all around largemouth bait. When you're trying a new lake, search bait, I guess. Um, when I'm trying a new lake, I always have a search bait tied on and I always have a jig tied on. So I usually start fishing shallow, um, see if I can find them shallow. Flip docks, flip trees, uh, dunk weeds always with a jig and I usually have something like a chatterbait spinnerbait I don't really fish a lot of crankbaits um, or a swim bait tied on just to cover water when I'm moving between shallow grass and docks and all that stuff so um, I'll be checking that around it's kind of like a one-two punch I, I fish an area I flip an area with these and then I kind of move on and try to figure out where they're where they're sitting last year actually I didn't catch anything over like two and a half pounds out of grass so most of my fishing last year was docks trees rock and all that stuff so um I did a lot less searching and more just jig fishing <laughs> <laughs> photo rocket thank you that is awesome thank you so much if you could pick one bait to fish smallmouth in Lake Ontario East in mid-July, what would you be your go-to? I've only ever fished Lake Ontario for smallmouth once, so take this with a grain of, a grain of salt. But I would fish a drop shot because <laughs> we did amazing on a drop shot. A drop shot tube or a swim bait dragging it on bottom. So that's, that's those are the three I would go. If you're feeling a little more spontaneous, a hair jig or a, or a, spit, or a spy bait, but they have to be kind of in the mood for that. Can't go wrong with black jigs. Green pumpkin jigs, oh yeah, <laughs> they're so fun. I love a jig bite. 
there's there's top water is cool you can see them explode and all that stuff but a nice thump on a jig is something else it's just it's just, i can't wait <laughs> What's your favorite lure to catch big bass with? All my biggest fish last year came off a black jig. Um, so I'm going to say a black jig or any color jig for that matter. But um, swim bait fishing is a whole nother, big swim bait fishing is a whole nother breed. Um, I have more time this year, thank God. And um, hopefully I'll be, cause I, like last year I kind of slacked. I, Two years, three years ago, three years ago, I, um, I picked up big swim bait fishing, as you guys saw. Last year, I didn't really have too much time, so I kind of was a little bit more into the, I, I needed to film content for you guys, so I had less time swim bait fishing just because you don't always catch fish swim bait fishing, right? So this year, I had more time. I bought, I spent a lot of money in swim baits this year, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, but also unfortunately. So um, I really, I really want to break my PB on a swim bait. If it doesn't happen, though, it's probably going to be a jig. If Scott Martin wants to come up here to Ontario, that'd be fun. I'll show him what's up <laughs> or try to at least. Favorite top water? I like the Pop Max, the uh, Mega Bass Pop Max. Aaron put me on those. Really like them. Uh, frog's always fun. Um, I need to fish a frog more too. I don't really fish a lot of spooks or anything like that. Usually just popper and frog. My PB bass this year is only 6.3. My PV legal bass this year is a zero, so I'm jealous of you. <laughs> I appreciate the other species videos. Photo Rocket, that's, I'm happy you're enjoying them because uh, I'm having a lot of fun fishing for them and learning all those different species I've been fishing for. Um, yeah, no, losing big fish sucks. Sucks so much. Favorite Lake Ontario, Ontario Lake to spend a day on? Hmm. I don't know. One with big fish. <laughs> I, I, I really want to explore more this year. So last year, I ventured out of Fairbait, did a lot of different lakes. This year, we are going in every direction, just looking for, looking for new places to fish, uh, new bodies of water to hold big fish, and, of course, looking for big fish. So going to be doing a lot more of that this year. But um, I do want to still kind of be able to hunker down on a couple lakes and just know them very well. All right, guys. So I actually have to get going. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys enjoy this live stream. I'm probably going to do one more um, before Bass Opener. I'm going to – I think I did it last year. I did a live stream the night before Bass Opener when I was tying up all my rods. I'll probably do that again this Friday, next Friday, next Friday. Um just to chat with you guys while I'm tying up. But other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this 30 minute live stream and I uh, got a lot more videos coming for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy them and I'll see you guys in the next one.